morning, Brock. Hi, everyone. How's everyone doing? Arena, good turnaround Tuesday to you. I'm doing okay. I hope you're doing fine. Hope everyone's doing fine. We root for everyone here at Forex Analytics. You're like our family. So I thought I'd start off with crude. Hi, everyone. Barry, nice to meet you. Hugo, Sinatra, all my trading warrior brothers and sisters. How are you? So, uh, you know, last week there was some discussion about uh, a third drive in crude. I didn't think we were there because of all of this momentum. But this certainly is starting to look like one right here on the four hour time frame. Uh, we're not confirming these highs on the two hour time frame. You could take a picture if you want a screenshot of both the RSI and the crude. So we haven't had a confirmed high in since February 20, okay, only a couple of days ago on the four hour. You could even see it on the two that we're not above 70. We tried 70, we weren't able to do it. So just something for you guys to um, you know, consider. It's pretty classic looking here. Also, um, you know, I'm of the opinion that this is pretty overdone, e.g., and way overdue for some correction. I'm not saying that today's the day, but you know, for us to be able to rally back to 8740. And when you look at this big break that we've had here in EG, it's been a huge break from, let's call it 600 pips. So, you know, 38% retracement from wherever the lows come in, if it's today or we're still gonna work lower, there's nothing in the RSI on the daily, it's pretty negative. So at the most, I'd look for a bear market rally, maybe back to 87 and a half, a little ponce. And this was a major breakdown right here, right at around 87.80. What's this low here? Okay, so right in this level, this big support level that finally gave away. So we'll see if that happens. And I wanted to give you guys the big picture in gold. So here it is. To me, it looks like a descending triangle. Uh, yesterday's low held this low back from in December before we had a big, a big rally up to here. A lot of people had trend lines and showed this as a breakout. Um, this is a, almost a $200 formation from the high of the move at 2048, whatever it was, maybe 180 bucks. But, you know, it, it's hard for me to believe what the targets would be, but, you know, measures under a 1600 handle on a breakdown, uh, that would be the measured move off a formation like this. So uh, gold bulls, be very careful if we take out 1757. This was my target for a long time, 1680. And, you know, might be a good place to uh, take something in. But this is a pretty big bearish formation. And on the other hand, remember this 1920 level uh, was a high in 2011. So if we break out of this formation to the upside and you have to be open to everything when you do this, right? Um, you know, WD GAN, if you don't learn how to change your mind, you won't have any change left. So, uh, you know, either way it comes out, uh, we could have a huge move. So if this is just a big consolidation and we get a breakout over 1920, uh, that would be very bullish. I think that we'll have trouble here at around the 18 and a half level over these moving averages that are converging here on the daily. They're you know almost the same price. So this should be resistance on any further uh, strength in the gold market. Uh, I, we're finally having at least the signs of uh, some type of high in cable. I know it's been leading the way and that's part of the reason for looking for a bottom in Euro pound. But as you could see, uh, even though we made new highs last night, it wasn't confirmed on the two. It uh, really, we've been diverging for quite some time all the way from this high. So, you know, I've tried it a few times before. I'm in it again from yesterday. I'm down some pips, but maybe it'll turn for me today. 
And we're getting pretty good follow through in the S and P's and the NASDAQ was really the home run ball, wasn't it? So, you know, last week when we were up here, Blake was talking about Apple breaking down. And then, you know, up here on Friday, he was talking about how USD max uh, should have been making new lows and it wasn't, it was making higher lows. And uh, that was a great market tell. I know I talked about it yesterday, but you know, um, you know, these kind of turning points don't happen every day. So, you know, to me, it looks like we have a pretty good turn. Uh, 3,800 is still the measured move. I know we got back over this neckline, probably shook some people out. And we're at some support here. And you know what else is happening today? Jay Powell's going to be talking for two days. So, uh, you know, trade lightly. Uh, you know, there could be some... Uh, uh, pretty, you know, aberrational, volatile moves during this testimony. If he says the right one right word or one wrong word, so that's how sensitive the markets are. Um, I I actually think that uh, you know the main point of what he's going to say today is going to be about fiscal stimulus, which Congress, I believe, at least um, the House of Representatives, is ready to vote on and do something by the end of the week uh, we talked about it so maybe with the market under pressure uh, politicians will do something although um, it hasn't been that much of a drop where people are going to be you know shaken up yet that would probably happen much lower so uh, that's my take um, and I'm going to bring Blake in hey, hey hey coach how's it going hey good buddy how are you Hey, good. I just want to make sure um, Edward Dowd is the guy that you're bringing in today, the guest. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, we we had his Twitter handle incorrect. And I just want to make sure this is the right Twitter handle. I'm going to, uh, I'll, sh I'll show you. And I'm, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, Here he is. Yeah. Absolute man. And it's yep. at Dowd Edward. Yep. And he's going to, he's coming in today. And so I'm going to, I'm going to make that correction on our Twitter, our, 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 um, okay. our Twitter admin actually sent out the wrong um, tw uh, uh, tweet handle. And I'm like, no, that's, that's not him. That's, that's, that's Edward Dowd. I'm uh, not Edward Dow. So anyway, yeah. Okay. Um, I, I just, you, I, I sent up a, an update because yeah, our, um, our, uh, our, our guy that's in Europe that, 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 uh, you know, does a lot of our social media stuff he he accidentally put the wrong handle in okay so, you know i don't think ed's gonna mind much because uh it's a pretty humble guy that after his name he says the obsolete man well there's a guy taught you know uh being 60 uh seven years old i understand <laughs> the word <laughs> obsolete buddy so like, anyway like I'm do you even matter it yeah, back of dust in the wind. You know, someone That's that it. didn't, uh, you know, really, uh, you know, grasp crypto and watch fortunes being made and what's a SPAC and all these new things that are in the market. And I'm still looking at legacy markets while uh, grinding it out while people are just having getting rich on windfall moves. Yeah, so, I know. And well, I'm look, obsolete, look, bro. Let's discuss a little bit those windfall moves because yeah. Bitcoin actually just took a slump. Um, you know, yesterday, yesterday, yeah, yesterday we had a good move, and then today we had a move into lower lows below the thirty-eight percent retracement. Now, this is uh, the analysis. I, you know, Forex Analytics people already got this analysis already. I just said that twice, um, but the breakout point here is going to be really important. It comes in around forty-two thousand. So, and it's just below the 50% retracement. So I, I wouldn't get too terribly excited about the moves that we're seeing. Um, this is just kind of shaking out some weak hands, but it is worth noting because, you know, it, it's, it's, I mean, the, the, the excitement around cryptocurrency right now is, I, I want to say, not out of control, but it is almost out of control. So you've got, you know, pretty extreme um, optimism there. And that gets a little scary when you get in those, you know, these types of situations. I'm not saying it's going to go down. Uh, look, I've been bullish Bitcoin since we were at the three, $4,000 level. And I'm just, you know, I kick myself in the ass 
Me too. Every man. single day for not buying it. And and it's but it but I don't trade it. It was one of those things that I was just gonna put it away for my kids and I wanted it to go a little bit lower and then you know, every day passed, I'm like, ah, you know, I should be buying some. And then, you know, and then you just forget about it. And it's, anyway, it's woulda, shoulda, coulda. Yeah. Anyway, I, I still think Bitcoin looks great longer term. I, I, I would be really careful about trying to chase it up at these levels. The excitement around it, like I said, is a little... You know, is it warranted, unwarranted? I'm not the I'm not the person to really make that judgment, but I, I, I will I will tell you that technically it's we're a little you know a little overdone. Uh, I, I what I I think ultimately, and, I, and I'll and I'll stop here for a second, and I'll let you guys um, comment. Is I'd love to see us break back below the 200 day moving average. You know, consolidate around the you know high 20, low 30 thousand dollar range, and consolidate there for a while. And then see what happens. Um, but the the one thing I last thing I needed to say about cryptocurrency is it is a sentiment driven asset. So as it's coming down, you have to be careful with stocks. You have to be careful with the Aussie. You have to be careful with commodities. My edge chart of the day yesterday was copper. Copper is down right now, but you know this is becoming a big risk for risk assets. It's not just you know, it's not the commodity super cycle and not just the commodity super cycle. It's crypto super cycle. It's everything not dollar related super cycle. It's stock market super cycle. We're, we're, we're going to have recovery. We're going to come out of our shoes. We're going to grow at 40%. We're going to, you know, we're going to have PE ratios of, of over a hundred and, you know, GDP of, 20% a year annually for the next 400 years because of all this money that's built up, you know, because of COVID I'm being very sarcastic right now, but yeah. you, you guys get the drift that I'm pointing the point I'm trying to make is there's a lot of excitement, but I have to also say there's a lot priced in right now. So anyway, I, I, I had to get that off my chest and we are, you know, everything's at a lot of extremes right now. Um, Stelios, uh, I, were you going to say something or Dale, were you going to say something? Oh, uh, no, just you're at easy money. You have, uh, what's, what hasn't gone up? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, every, everything's gone up. And, um, um, uh, Martin says another, uh, another 5% down pre-market Tesla. I mean, Tesla's down Apple. Did you guys see Apple? Uh, well, here's Apple. Um, you know, we are, let's see where Very we're tall, at. Blake. Well, it's we're now below the neckline of the head and shoulder pattern. We are below the trend line. This is, guys, this is a big deal. I, I know I've been, I sound like a broken record for the last, you know, four or five days as we broke, as soon as we broke this trend line. And you guys, if you, even if you follow me on Twitter and you don't even listen here normally every day, you, you saw the tweet when we broke through there. And I'm like, should be watching Apple, should be watching Apple. This is the largest company in the world. And technically it's breaking down. So, and I'm not saying that, you know, Apple's going to 50, but it looks like it's going from the 120s to maybe back to 100, you know, maybe the yeah. 200 day moving average. Yeah. I mean, it's not like you're asking for a lot here. I'm just saying that when that starts to happen, you know, you got to pull back an Apple, you got, yeah, Tesla's down, Tesla's getting crushed right now. You know, I mean, we're coming off some pretty key levels here and, you know, Tesla, Tesla and Bitcoin, th that's going hand in hand. You guys understand that, right? <laughs> it's yeah. like, wouldn't that be something? Well, Musk it, bought a lot of Bitcoin. I think some of the upside recently was that he was making money on Bitcoin. Well, no, you that's have to what I've heard. announced huh? uh, that, that he bought Bitcoin or put, you know, spent $1.5 billion, I think, in there, whatever, yeah. bought Bitcoin. That was like around here. But oh, you're, okay. what you're going to see is you're going to see the stock that's you know tied to Bitcoin too now. So just like uh, there's another, what's the Apple other? mining uh, did it too, a silver company. There's a lot of companies. Uh, a lot putting, of companies have put their put, put their yeah. balance sheets to work in in cryptocurrency. There's one that you know a company that hasn't even made a whole lot of money. That oh god, I can't think of the name right now. Uh, some of you guys might might be able to remember, but. Anyway, there, there's a there's a company that's completely tied to Bitcoin now. Um, oh, there it is. Brock has it. MicroStrategy. Yeah, MSTR. Is that what it is? MSTR. Yeah. MicroStrategy. Yeah. Yeah. 
you know, pre-market, yeah, we're coming down. Whoa, why are we coming down? Well, because Bitcoin's coming down. This this company doesn't even make money, you know, and it's just moving with with Bitcoin. <laughs> this is it. This is a scary thing. But yeah. wouldn't that be something? I'm and I'm just I'm just I, I just got. I'm going to say this, but I'm not. I don't believe it. I'm just saying. Wouldn't that be something if Bitcoin, like all the, like you know, something happened where you know taxation regulation. Uh, crypto holders couldn't get away from it. Cryptocurrency just slumped to like, you know, I'd say nothing, but like, you know, it slumps back to like a thousand bucks and, you know, there's no more interest in Bitcoin ever. You know what I mean? Let's say that something like that happens and then Tesla, you know, completely craters and then, you know, it becomes just a normal car company like General Motors or Toyota or whatever else, you know, and, do you, you guys don't know. I don't. I, I've been around now for uh, a lot less than Dale. I knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I was just I waiting. Mean, I, <laughs> Anytime I, we start I, talking about age, I know I'm about to. Uh, be yeah, mentioned. I got my Series Seven in 1995, and I started trading, like trading for a living in ninety end of ninety six, early ninety seven. So um, it's been, yeah. you know, obviously about twenty five years. That I've uh, been I should have retired back then. Y- yeah, you should have been <laughs> retired. Hell, you, you're. I mean, you had, you know, you had great grandkids at that point, and I, you know, yeah. I'm just kidding. Um, but what I'm trying to say is that uh, that I've seen a lot of crazy things in the market, uh, and I know you've seen a lot of crazy things in the market. And Stelios is the Stelios is actually a year older than me, mm-hmm. and and way more bald. And, uh, and Stelius, you, you've seen a lot of stuff in the market too. I mean, he's merciless today. Huh, and I traded, I traded through the uh, 2008 crisis at the bank and it was, it was uh, heavy. I was at Merrill Lynch at the time and we were just about a day away from going bust. So, yeah, I mean, look, there, we've, we've seen a lot of crazy things in our experience as market participants, you know, Dale, Stelius, myself, the rest of our team. I'm going to tell you guys, if you don't think it can happen, it can. Whatever you don't think can happen, it can. Just imagine like, oh, there is no way Tesla, you know, becomes just a, you know, priced as a normal car company, like the same market cap as General Motors. I mean, what what is the difference between Tesla and General Motors nowadays? market cap wise i mean percentage wise somebody else somebody oh, that sure. follows the stocks got to know oh it's, got, it's worth how so many much times more. past yeah. market cap if you don't think that can't happen it can i'm not saying it's going to happen it can it is possible anything's possible in the markets that's the point i'm trying to make now let me let me talk about a couple of things really quick and stelius maybe you, you can jump in here and dale you too um before uh, Ed gets here. We have Pal speaking today, and Dale, you made a great point, and I and I want to reiterate what Dale said here. And and I'm going to talk about Aussie. I'm going to talk about copper, and I just want and and I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave these charts up right here. Okay, commodity super cycle, yada yada yada. Auss, Aussie's breaking out. We're above you know 78 cents, and we're you know just ripping. Uh, copper is at the 161% extension, just ripping. Everybody today expects Pal not to be hawkish. He's going to be dovish. He's going to be, he, his, his statement, it's already out. He's not, you know, it, it's more of the questions and what, you know, the legislature or the Senate Banking Committee, I believe it's Senate, Senate Banking Committee today, um, uh, let me just confirm that. Uh, that is at the Senate Banking Committee today, and then tomorrow will be the um, the House Oversight. I think no House used to be uh, called Humphrey Hawkins. House, yeah, this used to be the Humphrey Hawkins, correct? Um, but this is his semi-annual, and he's going to be quizzed a lot today. It's going to be a long day. We got to listen to you know all the questions and answers. He's going to be you know questioned about inflation. He's going to get questions about cryptocurrency. He's going to get questions about the rise in yields and wh- what the impacts are there. You know, he's going to be asked about a lot of the fluff in the market, you know, the ex- extremes, you know, stocks at all time highs, yet unemployment's 
high? How do we have a recovery when there's, you know, so many jobs are lost and he's going to have to explain that's mostly service sector jobs. And, you know, you know, there's going to be a lot of things that he will say and he'll have to answer to. And Dale is exactly right there. He could say one word, one word that completely alters how people in are, 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 you know, trade this market. One thing, one slip up, one word can completely upend everything that we're doing right now. Yeah, he's going to so, be pitching the uh, COVID relief that we need fiscal. It can't all be the Fed, right? That's yeah. That's 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 exactly right. He he. The, and your great point, Dale. I mean, we have um, uh, the, we have the stimulus bill that's going. Uh, it's going to the Senate right now. Congress by the the end of the week, and then Senate. So yeah, first in the House just, of Representatives, I believe. I, uh, yeah, and and it's going to the House, and and, and I doubt it's going to be able to uh, to pass there at the way it stands right now, right with the um, minimum wage increase and. Oh yeah, he's going to have to give up that. There, the, yeah, so there's going to have to be concessions, but he's going to reiterate that there's only so much they can do, right? And we got to get fiscal stimulus, and you know, so there's going to be a lot of things. We probably know everything he's going to say. And we, you know, we, we can reiterate it, but the fact of the matter is he can say something that may, you know, whether, you know, he's, he just sounds a little bit more hawkish and less dovish. Um, he, you know, his tone, his demeanor. And the, the reason why I'm pointing this out is I, I, I know my chart of the day yesterday was copper. Um, if you get here, let me just show you what the, uh, just so you guys can see what the DSI looks like. Well, I don't have to pull it up. It's buried in my charts here. Um, but the DSI for copper, two days in a row, that would be Friday and yesterday, Monday at the end of the day, the DSI r- ranked at 93. Now, I've been, um, I've been looking at daily sentiment index for a long time. Whenever you get above 90 or below 10, you just don't stay there that long. That means there's extreme, extreme bullishness in... Uh, you know, in copper being 93 and extreme bearishness when you're below 10. And right now copper's registered two days above 90. And, you know, even when we get into the high eighties, I start to get a little weary, but man, when you're in the, in the nineties and especially like 93, you, you very rarely see numbers at those levels and they don't stay that long. So um, you've got copper that is at the big golden fib since the lows and you could say, Oh, Hey, we got a commodity super cycle. Yeah. Do you think that's not priced into the market right now? After 115% move in less than a year, are you going to tell me that none of that's priced in? Yeah. A lot of it is a lot of it, if not all of it. I mean, you, you know, here's the thing. Remember, The analysts that are telling you that the super cycle is happening is selling you the idea (laughs) because they already own it. You know, they bought copper on the breakout of 320. They got caught short and reversed their positions at 260. And now here they are at 380. They own, they've owned it all the way up and they're like, oh, commodity super cycle. And, And you're like, oh yeah, commodity super cycle, I'm buying. And then, you know, who's selling it to you? Yeah. Right. Yeah, we 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 might have a, a continuation of a bull market, but you know what? We Just can, like, but yeah, but, but we could that, have a correction first to shake out the people that came late to the party. Exactly, and that and and the whole thing is look, I and, and I've told you guys this. I'm very bullish to Aussie. I'm not bullish right where we're at. I mean, it's not saying that it can't go higher. I, I just for me, I'm not going to be a buyer up here. I'm not going to. I'm not going to get sucked in here. I was hoping that this, you know, flag would be more corrective down to the mid seventies to buy it down there, but it's just, it, you know, obviously we pushed to new highs, but everything's divergent. Relative strength is divergent. And the one thing that I got to mention, and then I, I need Stelios to, to chime in here if he wants, and I got to leave some room up for him. Sorry, Stel. Um, we got a lot of talking to do today. Anyway, uh, there's, you know, with the cop with copper breaking out, with stocks um, looking a little weaker, uh, and if you guys missed it, we have you know a head and shoulder pattern that's trying to trying to play out, but we just hit the thirty eight percent retracement. So don't get too excited about this head and shoulder pattern yet. Um, 
you know, because we we're, we're holding support. That's, you know, we could end up being a false breakdown here, but the point I'm trying to make is there's a lot of extremes out there. And, and if we start to, uh, if, if Powell, Powell makes one hiccup, um, you know, it'd be, you could see a bit of a move. And then also, you know, there's a lot of these S packs that are the SPACs that are, are uh, coming off today. Right. I don't know. Actually. Taking there. Yeah. The, the, yeah. The, I don't, the, I don't even know what they are. The, 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 it's the, the, uh, special well, purpose know. vehicles. That, well, yeah. I mean, I'm, they're, they're just basically grouping a bunch of private companies together. So investors can, can be involved in those versus going public. And you tell me um, what, what, what business experience Paul Ryan has to have a spec. Well, you know, he's a again, spec, it's, I mean. it's putting together a bunch of different, you know, a yeah. b- bunch, bunch of different people, you know, and, and companies right. coming together to support like, you know, a bubblicious. It's just a different way of raising money. Um, yeah. And, and they're, they're, it's like taking shell companies basically and, and yeah. wrapping it up in a, in a, you know, private company underneath the shell company. So this way you don't have to go through the. Right. Through Pay the, the money. It's, it's a cheap way to raise money. It's a cheap way to raise money. It's a cheap way to go public. Um, and it's, this is not an uncommon thing. I've people did this back in the dot com bubble. Too. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, yeah. okay. So well, there's anyway, a parallel. The, 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 the problem is, is this is, this is a, a byproduct of easy money. And then we have this uh, SPAC that's getting crushed. I forget what the symbol was uh, yesterday, but yeah, it was, it, 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 you know, it's weighing on sentiment. It's all these things, whether you're talking about Bitcoin, you know, you're talking about the commodity, you know, moves. Anyway, it's a lot of risk out there. So, uh, Stelia, sorry, I'd, what do you got to uh, say? It's about- okay. You said everything. No, I'm kidding. Um, actually, to answer your question, uh, GM is about 75 billion cap, and uh, Tesla is was 700. It's going to be a bit less now, but still, it's incredible, right? The, uh, Wait, so it's it's how many times? Ten, GM ten times, size? nearly how ten many? times. Let's say nine times. Okay, that look I, look Tesla created, you know basically really created the electric vehicle. And, you know, I, I always try to I think back, like what broke out, you know, the stock market, you know, and uh, usually when you, when you see these big breakouts, like you have to go, this is, you have to go back to like 2000 and, you know, usually it's some sort of innovation. So um, one of the reasons why I believe the stock market broke out you know, where we're at right now and, you know, well above, you know, 2,500 is because of the adoption of electric vehicles. You know, it's always been like an idea, but Tesla's really, you know, it's been the forefront. And I, I believe Tesla will always have a premium as a car manufacturer based on it bringing electric vehicles to the masses in a fun and, 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 and great technology way. But does it deserve to be 10 times the size of General Motors? I don't know. Yeah. Especially based on how much, uh, how much, how big the, <laughs> the, the their the, slice uh, of the pie is basically right. How many cars? Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. Which is tiny. Yeah. yeah. I have quite a few friends who are car collectors and car freaks and they all say the same thing. It just makes no sense. The market is pricing that Tesla is going to dominate the car market in the next 10 years. They were the first mover, but uh, you know, usually in things like that, the first mover prepares the market for what's coming and then somebody else comes and brings a better product which is already happening but anyway yeah, yeah and i mean i, I was I, I don't follow the electric vehicle market much because i'm 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 a gas i'm a fossil yeah. fuel car kind of guy so are you stelius i know that I am, yeah. uh, although i don't think that teslas are not cool i i almost everybody i know owns a tesla it seems like but the the fact of the matter is is that um I don't follow it, but I know that there's like, there's uh like Ford just made a, their Mustang. And I, I, I watched a couple of uh, review videos on, you know, that versus Tesla. And I mean, I, I, I don't say it's a superior vehicle, but you know, it definitely will take some of the market share. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Especially at the price points that there are, you know, versus a Tesla versus these, you know, new electric vehicles that are coming to market. So I, I don't believe that, Tesla can completely dominate with other players coming in, right? I agree with you. And let's yeah. not forget China, like Forrest Gale is saying, China is going to bring EVs to the world, you know, and oh. Neo, whatever their, their name is. 
and all the others coming. Yeah, and Georgie, you said it correctly. T Tesla feels like the new Prius. And by the way, we had a <laughs> Prius for we had a Prius for literally ten years. It was our our extra vehicle for so many years. My wife, uh, when she was uh, getting her master's degree, she had to drive like this is when gas was five dollars a gallon. We had to get rid of one of our V8s because we literally would spend five hundred dollars a week in in gas. Wow! Uh, wow! Yeah, it was like four four four. It ranging between 425 and 475 a week in gas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we went and got a Prius. I was like, screw that. Uh, I took the brunt of that, by the way. I had to get rid of my V8, but you know, whatever. I'm not bitter. But I'm just saying, but but having a having a Prius, I mean, you're right. It's Tesla right now seems like the Prius of you know 10, 12. 13 years ago. So uh, I agree with that. Anyway. Um, Hey guys, just remember pal's testimony is today. It's going to be, it's, it's an important one. Um, it could be a market mover for those of you that are on, um, uh, that are Forex analytics subscribers in about 45 minutes. I'll see you there. Raj, I'll, I'll talk about SPACs when we, when I get over there before I do the bias chart with you. Um, uh, we're, we're actually, um, fumbling a few things around today. Steve is out. He's going to be out for the remainder of the week. He'll be back. Don't worry, but he is, he's out for the remainder of the week. So we got, we're juggling a little bit over here, but I just want to say, if you guys haven't um, tried Forex analytics, please do so. And uh, it's only $1 for 10 days. And then you can listen to all the other webinars that we're on going through the analysis process of all the FX majors and whatnot. But what's more important is if you want to try to get Forex analytics for free, visit our Forex sponsored page, Pepperstone Securities. Uh, we partnered with them. You can uh, open an account right here with this link. Um, you can get up to four months for free, depending on how much trading you do. Um, you get two months and then two months based on trading up to 500,000 in currency, which is just a couple small trades actually. And then um, you can get Forex analytics for free by doing that. So we'll see you there. Um, we'll see you in the chat rooms. We'll see you in the next webinars for our Forex analytics subscribers. Uh, Stelios, I'll catch you later. Dale, have a great interview with Ed and uh, we'll- Thank you, you, Blake. Soon. Thanks guys. Okay. Thank you, Blake. Welcome to FACE, Edward. How are you? Good, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. Excellent. Nice to meet you. Nice to see you again. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate oh, it. Oh, okay. So, see, I, I, I have uh, Alzheimer's. Uh, when, were, <laughs> when was the last time that we, I call it old timers. Uh, how long has it been, Ed? I think it was uh, December or November. Okay. All right. So, Ed, uh, you know, remember how to share your screen here in Zoom? Let me uh, hit click share and then yeah. select a window. All right. Let me click. So I want to start off uh, with, you know, something that you say on your Twitter account. Why an obsolete man? Uh, that, that, that's recent due to all the um, censorship that's going on and the fact that the, you know, the political realm using logic and critical thinking seems to be a problem. It's from the old uh, Stone series. There's an episode called The Obsolete Man where, uh, you know, Rod Ser Serling said, I saw the video. Yeah. Yeah. Lo yeah. Lo logic, logic is an enemy and truth is a menace. It's just, it's just the times we're in where, uh, you know, you say yeah, you feel stressed out about these times like everyone else. I'm still waiting yeah. for you to share your screen. Ed. Uh, I just clicked it. So oh, now I got to share it. Oh, there we go. There you go. Am I there? It said, yep. Got it. Okay. okay. So, uh, looks like you're showing, uh, uh, the S and P. So, can you just refresh yeah. my memory and the attendees a little bit about your background and how you got in trading? Yeah, so I I, I, um, I started off my career as a bond salesman, but then moved into equity. Uh, I was a growth portfolio manager for about ten okay. years, BlackRock, and then um, tried to start my own hedge fund that didn't work out. And I've been trading my own money for the uh, four or five years. Um, and I work closely with Peter Campbell at, uh, MCM. He and I are buying and we, he lets me use his software and we analyze the hundred and we trade it aggressively, both long and short swings. Okay. Day trades. Right. 
Okay. So, All right. So I'll talk about the S and P today, and um, you know what what we what we're thinking, and um, obviously you know we got a head and shoulders. It just looks like it's trying to break down. The measured move of this is twenty thirty. Kind of got there last night in the S twenty eight forty. Um, we broke. You mean thirty eight forty? Yeah, thirty eight. Yeah, sorry. I, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, you are. You know, I I know you're bearish now because you're thinking of, of a different <laughs> angle. But well, we, there we, are some people that think we could go there um, or to three thousand. But uh, does this look just corrective to you? Yeah. Um, so, so go ahead. This is, this is corrective. I think. I think there may be an important top coming, but. I don't think just quite yet. I mean, we broke down 3870, which was a the shelf that it needed. Right. Um, if we break 3800, that's that will get my attention. If we break 3700, then something's changed. So Peter and I are thinking that this is going to catch, and then we're going to have, you know, if you're a bear, unfortunately, another move probably over the next three weeks, pretty quick into like the 40. The 4,000, 4,100 area. And primarily that's going to be because, like you said, Powell's speaking today. He's going to be dovish. He's going to emphasize the fiscal aspect of this. Right. But it looks like that's going to, we're going to get a decision on that around March 14th. So that's another three weeks. So we're guessing the market front run that. And then, you know, it's the sell the news event. And we'll the markets handle that. Um, so you think we'll go back up into the uh, uh, fiscal uh, COVID rescue plan? Correct. And that'll be by the rumors, sell the fact. Correct. And, and look, okay. this, uh, we all know the valuations are kooky. Blake talked about Tesla. Tesla broke its 50 PMA for the first time in, in, in months. Um, it looks like a good break here. And it's got to follow through today. It broke it yesterday decisively, and it's breaking it again. It, you know, it's getting some nice follow through today. It'll we'll probably back test the 50 DMA in the in the subsequent rally we start to get in the next day or two, depending upon where we go. But you know, um, what do you make out of Nasdaq? Really, out you know, it led on the way up, and the percentage declines have been much greater to the downside in the last week. Yeah, I mean, look, the NASDAQ is telling you something's starting to gel. I think, you know, we're going to hear about economic recovery and rotation, and they're gonna, the market's going to try to levitate on rotation. But, you, you know, we all know that the mar most of the market cap is intact, and if those things really break down, the market's going to struggle. I don't care if the, the Russell 1000, uh, you know, is hitting new highs. That's just not going to be enough market cap eventually to, to, to levitate this. But... You know, the thing to remember is last year, as we all know, M1, uh, the money supply, M1 grew 65% annualized basis year over year. And that was just, that's, we've never seen that before. And that's why we are where we are today. Um, now, let's think about what's going to happen as we start rolling through the calendar year. The second derivative of that increase in the money supply is going to start to roll over. And that's why the Fed is emphasizing the fiscal aspect of this. And I've talked to a couple of hedge fund buddies that are really good at technical analysis and they're getting worried about the second half of the year um, from a second derivative standpoint on the money supply and just economic growth starting to roll over from the COVID rebound. So, okay, so are you saying that uh, in, in you know, plain uh, non-economist language that um, the Fed uh, with a second derivative um, is losing effectiveness and that's why he's going hat in hand for fiscal stimulus because the Fed feels like there's not much more they can do. What is the yeah. second derivative? Correct. Correct. So basically, I mean, they, what, they just did 65% last year. To keep this thing right. floating, they need to do even, you know, this is, this is about flow. They need to keep the flow going of money supply. So what, what are they, they, they going to do another 80% another this year? No. So... They're they're going hat in hand, like you said, to the to the to the to the um, to Congress. Congress. Yeah, and they yeah. need they need these guys to spend trillions of dollars. And if we get any kind of delay, or if it's mostly pork and it doesn't actually you know get into the real economy, it's going to be a problem. It's going to yeah. be a problem. Even even if they do, let me ask you this: You're an old bond salesman. 
And, uh, you know, I was, I was actually correct about something, you know, uh, about rates rising for since August when we had the turn in the tenure. And uh, I'm, uh, well, I'm wondering uh, why, and maybe you could explain it to me, why treasuries like, you know, TLT and ETF for the 20 year almost retraced the whole move from when the Fed stepped in on the COVID crash, yet corporates and junk have not suffered hardly at all. They've come off a little bit, but I mean, you look at TLT, it's almost, you know, 78, 6, 88, 3 of the whole rally from the COVID crash. So why, if they are buying bonds, why have yields increased so much more in treasuries instead of junk and corporates do you know well look i think it's i think it's got a lot to do with just technicals um you know we've had you know this 30-year decline in yields and i think right kind of hit, and especially the long end right i mean they, the fed i think what the what it what it what, what it's indicating is that the market's sniffing out the fed is losing control eventually and the long end is going to be the first place to move and you know given the political um uncertainty that seems to be going on in our country. I think that's also playing into this. I mean, the, you know, people, look, if you talk to a lot of people outside of this country, they looked at the election and they smelled something weird going on. And so even though, you know, uh, it's, uh, people don't like to talk about the election and there's a lot of censorship about talking about the election results, people in other countries can vote with their feet. And uh, the Fed, Unprecedented money supply, 65%. Um, I think the market, the, you know, the bond guys always smell stuff before the equity folks and the- uh, Yeah, the, but they've been on retirement for 30 years. So they finally, yeah. uh, the bond vigilantes are uh, finally uh, reappearing. It's the second coming of them. I don't know if they're, I, you, know, you know how this works. It's like, the, 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 I think the bond vigilantes are dead. I think what's happening yeah. is- <laughs> They're my age. They're my age. At at least some of them are biting the dust. Yeah, I I know. What it usually happens is when the when you get the last bond vigilante to die or go away, uh, you know, you get a reversal, and it's just a natural thing where you know there's just no more buyers of long end treasury bonds, and uh, you know that then they become net sellers. And I think I think that's where we are. I think I think it's the the Federal Reserve. Last year, with this COVID crisis and this, all the moves they made are so unprecedented in the political situation in the U.S. that has conspired to cause the long end to start to creep up. And you know that's always been my contention that this whole equity bull market is um, in in the credit markets. Eventually, the credit markets begin the end. And uh, okay, and, the, and 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 you know when you have the reserve currency long end. The U.S. dollar reserve currency, the, our long end start to creep up. That's going to eventually affect um, other asset classes, primarily the equity market. There's been yes, valuations <laughs> compresses them. So Correct. let me ask you this: You think uh, the dollar is a sacrificial lamb here? I mean, there's so much. Bear- it's hard for people to come up with a bullish narrative for the dollar. Can you? Yeah, um, I've always believed that when this if there is going to be an end to this kind of this madness, the dollar is actually going to pull people and have a huge rally. Um, the dollar ends with it with an explosion up and that's when we, you know, maybe have a, a different you know, world currency, but it, you know, the, the, we, in, in 2000 and 2008, the federal reserve flooded um, the world with dollars and everybody borrowed right. dollars. So there's a huge amount of borrowing in dollars. And eventually if the dollar if there's a credit crisis and, 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 a, and a true economic deterioration, the dollar is going to get called, get called home, and that's going to cause the dollar to go up. Credit destruction actually causes the dollar to rise because we're the reserve currency. So we have some sort of solvency crisis or something along those yeah. lines. The dollar yeah. will sit out. And, and look, if you look at the, the techno, the, um, the dollar is like, Broke out of a, a, a trend, line, a down, a long-term trend line down from last year, and it's it's back testing it now. So you, you have, have a to, picture of it. Yeah, let me. Yeah, let me. Can I share? How do I share? Yeah. Uh, 
uh, just, uh, you know, if you if the chart comes up on this screen, you just do it on this screen. If not, you, you, um, you know, you. Let me move it over. Huh? Yeah, let me, let me, let me pull out my dollar chart. Okay. And that's our bailiwick. So, um, so you're saying we broke out of a downtrend with this last rally we had to like 91.40? Yeah, but, but now, to we're see. Back, now we're back testing the downtrend with this most right. recent rally. Can you can see that now. Yeah, got it, buddy. Okay. Yeah, so there, you see, so so from April of last year, we had downtrend. We broke out of it at the beginning of February. Now we're kind of back testing that that green line I've drawn. Okay. And, and so I think we'll chop around here, and we're trying to put in a low in the dollar. That's what yeah, I. Think. This could be a higher low here with every with the whole world, com, you know, so bearish a dollar yeah. that yeah. you know I was thinking at least a bear market rally to ninety five, ninety six was possible. Maybe it happens during this corrective phase in the S and P's, but so far in the last couple of days with weakness in equities, we've seen really no bid in the dollar. Maybe Correct. today. Maybe today. Yeah. So you look, the dollar, I think, is trying to put in a um, I mean, the dollar has has cycles to it. Right. And, you know, it's. Yeah. Uh, I think there's I think the dollar goes on a three year cycle and maybe it's trying to put in a three year cycle low and then it'll try to we'll see if that rally is, a, a you know, a left translated, you know, a bearish counter trend rally or if it's a um, right translated. We won't know until we start to see it. But, you know, if this is going to end, the dollar is going to explode. Um, but you know, I don't. I want. I, I've, I've tried calling tops too many times a couple of years ago. So I just, I just, I just go along and and, and trade what I see. But right now, I see a top coming in three weeks, and we'll see how important of a top it is. And I know people want to get bearish right now, but I wouldn't get too bearish right here, right now. I think, I think uh, we might have a little more weakness today. We might scare people and try to take the S and P down to. 3,800 or maybe into the 3,700s, but I think it'll catch and then rally. Okay. So uh, you and Peter are thinking uh, 4,100 on this next rally, maybe into April. I know there are a lot of important cycles due in April. Is yeah. That and yeah, that's what we think. Um, uh, but, you know, look, we're, we're also, you know, um, flexible. Yeah, we're flexible. And if we start, if we really break down 3,700, Something else is something else is up, and uh, we're not going to be looking to get long. But I mean, right now, um, you know, we were short a little bit the last couple of days, but you know, we're looking for a long here at some point. Okay, because uh, I remember the last interview with Peter, he was looking for a high. He, I brought up April, and he said he didn't think it would. Uh, it had that much time in it. He was talking late January, early February, and. Um, but that was, you know, several months in advance. Yeah. Um, and he was talking, I think, 3850 for a number um, when we were all, you know, we were 36 or so when he was saying that. So it was a great call. Um, yeah, he's, he's, moved, he's moved his targets up, as, as, as have I. And um, But we need to see a couple things before we get really bearish. And we haven't seen them yet. We need to see some, uh, according to his sentiment work, some unconfirmed highs which we haven't seen yet. And we need to see credit sentiment deteriorate, corporate credit. We haven't seen that yet. And we also need to see some Hindenburg omens, which we haven't had any of those yet. So we're thinking maybe into the middle of March, we'll see what the market looks like then, if it's higher. Okay. And, and so- uh, and around, the, uh, around the uh, spring equinox. Yeah, an important top is coming, but you just don't want to front run it because- you know, this, I, this, I know. You know, I think we all know. You know how many you, you think I you think uh, I didn't try and short a lot of divergences that got blown out. So, yeah, it's um uh, it, but I finally did you know uh, nail the high last week. So, um, I'm interested in um, your look. Uh, anything else that you and P you pay attention to on your own um, that you want to share with us today? Um. So let's also take a look at, uh, let me grab the VIX. Okay. Um, I was thinking that, you know, during this period that maybe we could rally, there's a gap up around 29. Yeah. Um, the, so I'm just looking at the VIX curve. Uh, oh, okay. 
uh, the VIX futures term structure. And right now it's um, positively sloped and um, you really don't want to get too bearish uh, when it looks like this. Um, Why? That, that, that's telling you that things um, are not stressed out in the, with the market makers and the volatility. And, you know, I'll start to get really concerned if this VIX futures curve flattens out or inverts. I've caught some nice tops watching this. And whenever you get in an inversion um, at a high or new all-time high, it's about to implode. And we don't have that yet. So we might get, we might see an inversion, you know, in three or four weeks. But right now, this term structure suggests to me that any kind of dip here will want to get bought in new highs. And okay. So the inversion, um, would when, that when, be? The March go contract ahead. goes above. Like backwardation uh, in futures where the, fr the curve would show um, the front end being the strongest and the deferred yeah. being weaker. Is that what Correct. you're talking about? That's what I'm talking about. All right. That's like backwardation on uh, commodity markets where people will pay up for the front month and the right. back months are lower. Yeah. And, you know, look, if, if you, if, if you're, if you're looking, if, if one of, that's one of the tricks a lot of us use is if you're hitting new all time highs and the VIX curve is getting flat and about to uh, go into backwardation, you know, something ominous is coming and we don't have that yet. So this is, this strikes me as just a, a garden variety mill pullback that will get bought. I mean, I could be wrong. And if we invert in the next couple of days, then something else is going on. But right now, this is a healthy looking term structure on the mix. Okay. Um, I like your uh, insights into the market very much, Ed, and I'm sure anyone listening to us and or listens later to the recording would want to know how they could stay in touch with you and your opinions and your looks. Uh, do you have a place where you would like to direct people? Um, yeah, I'm, on, I'm on Twitter and I talk to people at like they come into my DMS um, uh, at Dowd Edward. Right. And, um, you know, uh, you, can, you should also follow my buddy, Peter. Um, yes. MCM. At, uh, at MCM underscore CT. He's, um, he's got some great um, perspectives on the market. And he and I have been working together for about two and a half years. And we've both learned together. We've learned to trust his tools more than our own opinions. Um, I've become, as, as I'm sure this has happened to you too, too Dale, with the central bank manipulation, you just uh, trade what you see. You, opinions are not worth that much. So, yeah, and a lot of old things that used to work don't work you know i mean when copper was in the bear market you know, the things like all bull markets are capped and roofed in copper well it never really put on a roof but it sure worked in the opposite way so <laughs> you know what i mean buddy yep yep all right well copper. i vote yeah I, I amazing move in copper amazing move in commodities so um I guess, uh, you know, we're going to see, because most people are talking about the reflation trade. Do you think that we're, you know, a lot of that has already occurred or is still embryonic? If, 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 if I'm looking and Peter's looking and uh, we're on important top equities, that suggests that the reflation trade's already played out and that reflation trade started last. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's, there's two forces. I mean, the Fed's been fighting deflation since the, the great financial crisis. And right. And trades over the last 10 years. And I, I'm, I'm guessing this is already priced in. I'm guessing the dollar is put in an important low. I'm guessing, you know, as Blake was saying, copper's going to put in a top. Um, may not be the final top, but a top. And so, like, it seems to me we're reaching some sort of inflection point over the next two to four weeks where a lot of it, things are going to move around. Okay. It's going to be an interesting period. And uh, let me ask you this, Ed, you're, uh, when the vaccine is available to you, are you going to take it? Um, no, I, I don't take the flu shot. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm 
I'm in fabulous shape for a guy my age. I've, you know, as I got older, I decided to take a, uh, um, a hard look at my health and I, um, I've, I'm in the best shape of my life. And I think I've already been exposed to the virus, to be quite honest. I live on Maui and a dirty little secret. The virus was here in the fall and we didn't know it because everyone got sick on Maui in the fall. And then when we had the lockdown, no one got sick, even though we were exposed to 600,000 tourists between January and March. We really didn't have any cases and it wasn't because of the lockdown. It was because we had already, it had already blown through Maui in the fall. Okay. Interesting. Well, thank yeah. you very much, my trading warrior brother. It was uh, great to talk to you again. And, uh, you know, excuse me, I, you know, I've done so many of these sometimes. And when time goes by, I, you know, don't remember. So, yeah, no you know, have, have, uh, have mercy on an, uh, someone, a senior citizen. Anyway, yeah. I pre appreciate being on. Thank you for having me. Uh, it, was a, it was a great interview. Ed. Thanks so much for being with us today. And good hunting to you and to you and Peter. Say hello for me. Got it. Take care. All right, everyone. Uh, good luck the rest of Turnaround Tuesday. Remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. And you could turn in, uh, tune in to Blake as a member for the bias chart in about 19 minutes. And I'll see everyone tomorrow. You're welcome, Brock. The people are thanking you, Ed. And I'm going to wrap it here. Adios, everyone. Uh, you're welcome, Hugo. See you, Warriors, tomorrow. Adios. You're welcome, Sonny.